You see that cup? We're getting the championship. This is the 24th iteration and the third in the last four years to be contested by Seattle and Toronto. Svensson. Rodriguez. Oh, beautifully done. Nobody's feeling better than Brian Schmetzer and the Seattle Sounders. The Audi 2019 MLS Cup playoffs are over, and there is but one champion, and they wear wet rave green. 3-1 victory. One of us picked that scoreline. Two <laughs> MLS Cup titles in four years. 2016-2019 Toronto FC left with the taste of bitter defeat for the second time in three tries against the Sounders. We've got the highlights. We've got interviews from Seattle. We've got everything you need to know and think about heading into next season as well. But let's just start with your reactions, guys. 24th champion crowned. What does it mean? Kaylin, get us started. Well, first of all, congratulations to the Sounders. Uh, I think throughout the playoffs, they were the best team. Uh, and uh, look, it wasn't that way for large stretches of the match today, but they showed why consistently this team is on the right side of tight matches. They win in the small moments. They have the talent, and they get on the right side of these things. Brian Schmetzer uh, has not gotten the credit that he deserves throughout, <laughs> but this is why. When you have the most talented players and you bring his mentality to the team, a little bit of a chip on the shoulder with some talent can take you a long way. A lot of talent. Uh, and, and this team, they've done such a good job of putting this roster together. Uh, really, I mean, since Garth Lagerwey got there, but really since day one. And that's why they've made the playoffs 11 straight years. They now have seven major trophies in 11 years. It's four Open Cups, two MLS Cups now, and one Supporters' Shield. Uh, they have difference makers at every level, and they just have a culture where they repeatedly, they repeatedly do the job. And I, like... From the game, like, yeah, they didn't play great for 60 minutes, but they didn't really give up any good chances, and that's a team that has, like, confidence and veteran know-how. And then the last 30 minutes, any time they got a look, they were just assassins, and that's what the Sounders have done this entire postseason. Yeah, stay in games. That's what they do. And being the home team, being outplayed, you know, between the boxes for 60 minutes in that game, and when it truly matters, you know, the Sounders always find ways to win, especially at home. And you saw, you know, the – what I said yesterday with Victor Rodriguez being that key game changer coming on and getting the, the really the decisive goal to, to kill yeah. the game off. I mean, you, you can look at all their stars if you want, but you had guys like Svensson and, and Rodon, these guys picking up in big moments, you know, and that, 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 that changes the game. Been different names all postseason, but there's a couple that we know and we see in this match. We get to our highlights. It's Nico Ladero, Victor Rodriguez, Rui Diaz, Leardam with the goal. They had the march to the match. Here's Chad Marshall. Yeah. He's going to have fun tonight, I'm sure, in Seattle. They didn't even have him for most of this year. It didn't matter. But Toronto FC early, Doyle, they put the pressure on. They had the possession. They had the better opportunity. They had the possession, and they put some pressure on him. But that was their best look. It was a replay of that first half against NYCFC where they were clearly the better team, clearly had better ideas, and just were not sharp enough in the attacking third to turn it into big chances. And Seattle, when they got forward, it was rare, but it was almost always on the flank. And this was a huge moment at the end of the half from Quentin Westbrook, who was immense throughout the playoffs. You go into halftime, it's nil-nil. Toronto FC, I think we got Josie Altidore in reserve. We are the better team so far. And then, Ike, sometimes playing defense is cruel. <laughs> you get no glory as a defender, let me tell you, man. I mean, just one of the simple balls over the top, and it deflects twice, and there's nothing you can really do about it. This is back at the end of the, the first half again. But that, I mean, this, this second goal right here, what a brilliant layoff from Nico Ladero. It started with Gustav Svensson winning the ball and just playing simple. And then just that vision and these, their ability to work together, Ladero and Rodriguez, those two guys are special going in the pocket. And this, I mean, I felt bad for Chris Mavinga. He was clearly out of gas, miscommunication, and Raul Ruiz Diaz, you let him do that, he's going to put it in the net. Yeah, no, it's just a, it's just sort of a clearance to get out and on, on your lines. But this is what I was talking about with the mentality of this team. And it shows late here, the goal scorer's goal, where he just sort of swims around him, just does enough with a little bit of that fight preparation touch, and from there, it's the icing on the cake. Uh, awesome stuff from, from yours. They, they went searching then late, but uh, got this one back through Josie Altidore. But by, by this point, Just, it was over. It was yeah. done. Yeah, look, Josie came in on the 68th minute. 
Yeah, 76 minute goal from Victor Rodriguez. It's 2 0. Josie gets a consolation goal in the end. Your MLS Cup MVP presented by Audi is Victor Rodriguez. Here are your stats. The one that matters is at the very top 3 1. Like you said, in between the boxes, Toronto FC played well. Well, it's in the boxes right. that made the difference in this game. I think a key thing that we always overlook with the Sounders are they have stars, yes. They've got role players, yes. But they can grind you down over the course of 90 minutes. And essentially that's what they did today. They, they just stayed in the game. They just kept working. They kept going at it, kept going at it, conceded a possession, lost some EV turnovers, but they kept coming and they kept coming. And ultimately they made their goals off of luck. But you, I mean, they made their goals, yeah, based off of luck, really. Yeah. And you get in those positions, these things happen. And it always feels like it happens for the Sounders. There's got to be some reason for that. But, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> the one stat that I saw there that stood out was 35% possession, which for a home team you would think is uh, not the number you would think going into this game. But when you go through their past matches, LAFC 30%, uh, RSL was below 40%. The one game where they had over 40% in the playoffs was against FC Dallas, which mm -hmm. was probably their worst game of the playoffs. They don't need a lot of the ball to be successful because – in the right moments, they're able to do that little combination play with Ladero to find Rodriguez. He does a little shimmy in the box. They find the right moments uh, and, and make it their chances count. Yeah, and that's what they've done all through the playoffs. And um, Justin Morrow had a, had a quote afterwards where he said, we just weren't good enough in the 18s. And, like, full credit to Toronto because their game plan was excellent and they were, like, they were so good between the boxes. But with the sound, like, it almost doesn't matter. If Ladero or Rui Diaz decide they're going to win the game, good luck because they're, they're just so precise and they're such killers in the 18s. And, and that's what happened in this one. It, like, through 60 minutes watching this game, there was only one team on the field. But the Sounders, uh, we're not bothered. We could, you know, we could deal with this. We deal with this all the time. And then they got that moment and that was that.